Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. Last time, we talked about ethics as practice between mortal men, and briefly touched on the topic of rights. We said that people have rights, which come from their common nature. This naturally means that every human being has precisely the same rights, since all human beings share a common nature, human. In other words, no human being is entitled to more or fewer rights than any other human being, and nobody is exempt from those rights. So, what rights do we have? Right number one is this. We have the right to live, and for us, this means that every human being has an obligation not to infringe on this right. No person can justify premeditated murder, no matter what their circumstances, because life is the most basic right. No other rights, gifts, or benefits make any difference if you're not alive to enjoy them, and anyone who commits murder commits an act of extreme ethical hypocrisy. However, it's more than just murder. The second right is, we have the right to good health. This is a sub-right of the first in some ways, and this is the reason why feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, and caring for the sick are such important things to do. It's right for those people to have what they need to live, and when we provide that, we're doing something which is objectively right. People have a right to a certain amount of social and cultural liberty. Specifically, they have a right to personal respect, which means that we shouldn't slander people, a right to freedom in seeking the truth, so we should never censor truth seekers, a right to free speech, provided that speech isn't used immorally, and a right to choose what we do for a living, again, within reasonable ethical guidelines. We also have a right to truthful information about what's going on around us, so we shouldn't lie to one another. We have a right to benefit educationally from our society, and if we're particularly gifted, we have a right to use those gifts to pursue more advanced studies, in the hopes of earning places of greater responsibility in society. We have a right to worship God, as our rightly formed conscience tells us to, and to talk about our religion both privately and publicly. People have a right to choose whether they'll found a family or remain celibate, and parents have the right to support and educate their children, a right which no other authority figure should interfere with. We have a right to work, and to do it on our own initiative, and to do the kinds of work that are suited to our particular abilities, skills, and responsibility. We're entitled to a just wage in exchange for our work. We have a right to own private property, and an obligation to use that property for the good of others. We have a right to meet with each other and form groups together, to set goals for those groups and criteria under which people are permitted to join. We have a right to live in our own country, and, if we have a good reason to, the right to move to another. Lastly, we have a right to participate in supporting the well-being of our society. These rights all sound good, because we don't want anyone taking them away from us, and all of them are based on things that people need to be healthy, ethical, and free. However, as I said last time, that's not the whole story. Each of these rights requires us to respect that right in others, no matter who they are, or it won't take long for our own rights to disappear. If we demand our own rights while tearing down the rights of others, that's like building a house with one hand and tearing it down with the other. We all have a duty to support the rights of our fellow man, the first step in objective morality. This is the guideline which we can use to determine whether actions are objectively good or evil. Do they infringe on the rights of human beings or treat God unethically? However, figuring out whether an action is good or evil is only the first step to ethics, the art of avoiding evil and doing good. If an action is objectively evil, it's never right to do it. But even if it's objectively good, it still might not be right. That'll bring us into step two of the ethical process next time. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.